great galloping goblins. If we must have a cat, it should at least know how to behave. Natalie glared at the fluffy black kitten, half hidden beneath the lip of the overturned basket of herbal teas. The scent of mint, ginger, and roses wafted upward from broken packages, but she refused to yield to their soothing properties. The frown lines between her eyebrows, more like frown craters after decades of frequent use, were working overtime. Jillian Winterforth slid quickly between them, her chubby body clad in a loose embroidered white blouse and colorful tie-dye skirt, creating an effective wall between Natalie and the kitten. She bent over and scooped it up. It batted at her long white braid, and she flipped the plate behind her, removing it from harm's way. When she was standing again, she rubbed a cheek against the kitten's glossy fur. If you were in charge, I'm sure you'd have things running smoothly like in Eunice's day. Nothing like having an imprisoned citizen inside the cat to keep an eye on things, she said. Her amused response betrayed a fading English accent. Yes, excellent idea, Natalie said. Where is Tom? A young female voice answered from the hallway leading to the private parlor of the Victorian home that housed Cat's magical shop. Hubby won't be sleeping around town in a fur suit any time soon just to make your life easier, Natalie Taylor. Tom has plenty on his hands with his adorable new wife, a cafe to run, and a mansion to renovate. Thank you. When Cassie Sanders emerged from the hall, she winked a blue eye at Jillian, who smiled in return. Natalie didn't respond. They both knew she hadn't really meant that Tom should continue to fulfill the role of store cat. Probably. As she bent and picked up the scattered bags of tea, and Jillian went for the broom to clean up the mess made by the broken ones, Natalie straightened to the tingle at her spine that signaled the near presence of newly created life, her heart beating fast. The game is afoot, she said. You can hear my old bones creaking while I work to put things right, can't you? But at least everything, absolutely everything, will soon be back in place as it should be. Cassie laughed. Seriously, only a joyless old crone would complain about a playful kitten. Lighten up, Nat. Cat's magical shop has always had a cat. That cat has always been named Cat, and that's how it'll stay. It's a family tradition. Joyless old crone! Nat snorted. My dear, you have no idea. Look to that one. She gestured with her chin at Jillian, who was capturing the last of the spilled tea in the dustpan. If you're looking for a crone, in this trio of witches, that's not an honor I can claim. And Jillian... She rearranged the salvageable teas in the basket. I'm surprised that you haven't noticed it, too, how our little trio has changed. A way that will allow us to cast the spell that will bring order to my little world again. Jillian put the broom and dustpan back in the storeroom. And that change is? Natalie's head shook as she humphed, then said, You're not paying attention, are you? She nodded in Cassie's direction. Jillian's eyes followed her nod and dropped to Cassie's middle. They lit up with recognition. You mean she... is she? Her eyes opened wide. There's definitely new life in the room. Natalie looked at Jillian meaningfully. What do you want to bet it's not us senior citizens who are carrying? What are you guys talking about? Cassie asked. And stop staring at me like that. You're creeping me out. Jillian moved to her side. Sweetie, you won't mind a little staring if Natalie's right. If I could just... Jillian moved a plump hand to Cassie's stomach. Cassie didn't flinch, so Jillian left her hand there for a moment. Her smile turned into an all-out grin. Oh, it's true, all right. Nat, we're going to be grand witches. <laughs>